Here's a typical hot water event. There's a delivery phase, a use phase, and a cool down phase for every hot water event. Does that make sense? You turn on the tap, you are some distance in volume from the water heater going the pipes through some temperature or not, whatever it is, right? Hot or cold, warm or hot, whatever it might be, right? It has to go a certain distance with a certain volume and it gets there. That's the delivery phase. And you all just told me three seconds is your upper limit. Anybody got three seconds in their house yet? It's tough. You have, you have a research system or really close. Which one? Right, it's right under the sink, right? Okay, so that's the delivery phase. The use phase is whatever it is. We've been talking about water conservation, talking about different flow rates and showers and faucets and things. This is the hot water side, different con volumes of water for washing machines and dishwashers. All of that's the use phase, okay? And then when you turn off the tap, what happens to the temperature of the water in the pipe? Unless, of course, it cools down, right? Unless, of course, it's in your attic in the middle of the summer and it's in the afternoon. What temperature is your attic in the middle of summer in the afternoon? 120. Uh, it's not cooling down very fast. Might be warming up. <laughs> okay? So it's an interesting problem, but that's what we're looking for. The water heater temperature needs to be high enough to overcome all of the losses from where the water heater is to the furthest fixture in the house, right? And if it isn't, you're going to go tweak the temperature up until it does. Fair enough? Those losses are what you're trying to fix in a hot water distribution system. You want to minimize that loss. There's losses that occur in the delivery phase, and there's losses that occur in the use phase. You can't overcome the fact that once you turn off the, temperature, the tap, that the temperature in the pipe will ultimately cool down. If you don't have a circulator, you don't have heat trays to keep the line warm, it will cool down. Okay? That I can't fix. Physics wins here. Right. Oh, and by the way, the temperature of the mix in the middle there needs to be higher than the temperature you need at the faucet or fixture in uh, shower head in question. Why? You need to be able to mix. Anybody ever taken a, a, a shower with a spouse? And you don't need the same temperature? Okay. All right? It's different. Sometimes you need it hotter, sometimes you need it colder. If you don't have adjustability, you won't be happy long term. What do you want from your hot water system? Did we miss anything on, these, on this chart? Someone said I have to add clean cars to it. Some people actually have hot water to wash their cars with. Uh, I didn't, get, didn't get the memo for that, but that's okay. Uh, by the way, that 20-minute shower with a good friend has nothing to do about getting clean. But it might be in that relaxation and enjoyment bit, okay? How about this? What do you expect it to be? You expect it to be safe, reliable, and convenient, don't you? Safety, not too hot, not too cold. You want, don't want any harmful particulates or bacteria in the water, right? Sanitation, if you're in health and food service, you've got to pay attention to that question, right? What about reliability? How many here have a water heater at home? How many here have ever maintained the water heater that's at their own home? This is not a good sign, folks. We're in the industry and less than 10% of it are working on, are, are repairing, or not repairing it, just maintaining it, okay? There's a great website called waterheaterrescue.com. It talks about how to properly maintain a storage water heater, okay? There's a blog on there that you should read. It's been Q&A from a guy named Larry Weingarten who has a water heating museum in the basement of his home. Okay, he's into this even more than I am. And he really understands how to properly maintain and service water heaters. By the way, he's a licensed plumber in Monterey, California for the last 20 or so years. He's actually been working on water heaters since he was 13 or 14 years old. He knows a bunch, great guy to visit and chat with. So we don't do our own maintenance, and are our, our water heaters that we have in our homes today particularly complicated? No, oh, they on, off, they got a valve, they got, right, that's it, right? What do you think is going to happen with the need for maintenance as we put in more complicated water heaters? Think it's going to go up? Okay, we're not doing it now, we have a potential problem coming, okay? Um, we'd like them to last forever, we'd like them to be low cost, that's great. 
Uh, I don't think low cost is the fundamental issue for most people, by the way. It's good performance. It's good value for money. Uh, some folks don't have any money at all. I understand that's a not one issue. But for most of the population, it's performance that they'd like to have. The highest selling car selling the United States cars are not the lowest priced cars. It's the value cars. All right. Oh, back here. Convenience. Adjustable temperature and flow, never running out. You'd like the pipes and system to be quiet, right? Anybody got remember water hammer? Maybe still have it? Sometimes it shows up, you get it, it's a problem. All right. And then hot water now. Anybody like hot water now? You've said so. I have had conversations like this with over 15,000 people in the last decade. They've said exactly what you've said. That's where these things come from. Think the sample size is big enough to be almost statistically relevant? <laughs> All right. I have a guiding principle. Provide people with what they want, which is service, the service of hot water, safely, reliably, and conveniently. And then and only then can we talk about being efficient. I'll pick on the toilets because that's been one of the conversations here. Anybody remember the introduction of the low flush toilets back in the 90s? Was that an exciting proposition to be on the front line getting those phone calls? No. They didn't do the essential element of flushing toilet properly when we made the change. People were not satisfied from a customer's point of view. It must work first, then be efficient. How about low flow shower heads that came out in the early 90s? Anybody remember that? Some exciting showers, OK? How about low flow faucet aerators that you couldn't figure out there was any water coming out of the sink? Anybody remember this stuff? How about compact fluorescent light bulbs when they first came out? They didn't fit your, your lamps. The light didn't look right. They didn't last as long as claimed. Anybody had this experience? Until it works, you can't discuss efficiency with me. All right, let's keep going. Which distribution system is in your house? Anybody got, oh, before we get to that, I need a definition time here. A twig is a piece of pipe that serves one fixture, either hot or cold. A branch serves two or more, a trunk serves a bunch, the main serves the building. Is that fair? OK. I'm trying to get twig into the lexicon here, because it's a everyone understands what a twig is. It's been a good conversation. All right. Does anybody have a hot water distribution system that sort of looks like this? Water heater at one end, a main spine of a trunk line going down the middle of the house, branches and twigs of various lengths off of that. OK? How about one of these? This is the classic renovation case, where we added a bedroom over the garage. Water heater stayed stuck where it was, and there's a new direction of plumbing. Anybody got one of those? Right? That's the addition, right? It, it's the classic up over the garage, out the back for the master suite. All of those things are possible. Fair enough? How about one of these? Anybody here have a house built before 1950? OK? Water heater in the basement. And we've never met, have we? Water heater in the basement. It's in the basement near the center of the basement, right near where the gravity-fed furnace used to be, and they replaced the old furnace, right? Um, we've never met, right? And the piping, you had, it's two-story or one-story? So it went straight up to the second floor. There's a bathroom up there. And it went over around the, the side to get to the kitchen. There's a laundry room in the basement. Have I missed anything? It was a half bath in the front of the house. Pretty close? There might be two baths upstairs. But the point is this. It's a very simple plumbing system. All right. Anybody got one of these? OK. This is new. Um, and it's an interesting concept. We're going to cover it when we do the floor exercise. I'm not going to cover it now. 